This morning we're at Bukit Bruntung Golf and Country Club. I don't think I've played here since I was like 15. Do not remember this golf course at all. And the last time I played here, definitely played off the red tees. So we're gonna play off the blues today and see how it goes. Happy New Year and welcome back to the vlog. It is a brand new year and we've got a brand new course vlog today here at Bukit Buruntong Golf and Country Club. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it has probably been about 10 years since I've been at this golf course. I used to play junior events here but I seriously have zero recollection of any holes on this golf course. And this course actually has 36 holes so it could have been that I have played the other 18. But that 18 is now closed and they are left with this 18. So. I hope you guys enjoy this vlog and I hope you guys stay around all the way to the end. It's going to be a fun day. So we started off with this par 5. As you can see, it is a little bit narrow. The left side is full of trees and so you definitely want to go more towards the right side of this fairway. After that, from the second shot, it is pretty simple. It is an uphill approach shot. You basically can hit whatever you want. There is a ravine down the center of the fairway. so. As long as you're able to carry that, you can basically hit whatever. Or if you have to lay up as well, that is another option. So I am hitting a 3 wood here because it is still about a 200 yard shot to be up there clear and in the center of the fairway. As you can see, it is uphill so you do need more club. So I hit a 3 wood down the right side of this fairway and ended up having about 93 yards left to the green. So Bukit Buruntung does play off cow grass, so it is a type of grass that's quite common in Malaysia. It's a pretty hardy grass, so especially if you're in the rough, you do need to make sure that you take enough club because it can definitely pull your club, especially because it is very strong rooted. It's basically the kind of grass that you see at the side of the road, so they are very strong grass. So you do need to be cautious about that. So for my third shot, I hit a 52 wedge and got it on a green. Some of you guys ask what cow grass looks like. This is basically what it is. I've described it once in my vlogs, like the, the grass you find on the side of the road. And so yeah, this is what it looks like. So as you could see there, it is a pretty thick and long grass. So if it is left to go, it can be pretty difficult to play off. But I must say that the Bukit Buruntung fairways were playing very nice when I was there. So they were cut, cut down pretty well. That definitely makes it easier to play cow grass. If it is long, as I said, it can be very difficult to play. So I had this birdie putt on the first hole and it just did not break, but I left myself with a tap in par, which is a great start to the day. That's highway robbery. I actually thought you wouldn't make it. Yeah, same here. I mean, it looks really down slope. That's what I was like. Very good. Yeah, but I think it's almost straight actually. So immediately what you notice is with these mature courses in Malaysia, the views are just fantastic. It was just a beautiful day, so let's just listen to the birds sing this morning. So the greens at Bukit Buruntong actually do not have cow grass. They have a different type of grass, but it is very common when you are playing on golf courses with cow grass that you would notice that if they try to have different grass for their greens, the cow grass eventually will start growing on the greens. So this can make the greens not only slower but also quite inconsistent because the cow grass can really push the grain and stuff and it kind of grows in every direction. So this can definitely affect the consistency on a green and it usually does make it slower. So that's something to pay attention to. But we'll just take that tap in par on the second hole. The third hole is another par 4. This par 4 is pretty short. There is nothing much to it. For the tee shot, you do need to go more towards the right side. As you can see, it is a slight dog leg left. And on the left side, obviously, the rough does come into play a little bit. And the goal is always to keep it on the fairway, right? So for this hole, definitely want to go a little bit more towards the right side. Something else that I like about going to these courses that are pretty far away, 
this golf course is kind of in the middle of nowhere if you can say that and another nice thing about that is you can clearly see that we are no longer in the city the views here are very very different and it is a nice break from the city golf every now and again oh perfect <laughs> Another thing to note is that this hole does slope a little bit right to left in general, so aiming right off the tee does make your ball... Well, aiming right off the tee, basically your ball will still kick left and you will probably end up in the center of the fairway, so aiming right was definitely the right option here. After that, I only had about 80 yards into the screen. As I said, it wasn't a very long hole. I was a little bit in between a 58 and a 52 degree wedge here. And I thought that I should take the longer one just because of it being early and because of the conditions being wet and being cow grass. But I ended up catching that a little bit too good and ended up giving myself a bit of a long putt. Obviously, it's still on the green, so no harm done. And we still gave ourselves a birdie putt. But from 80 yards, I definitely wish I could have gotten that closer. But we always have to try not to be greedy and just to accept what we get and try to do the best with what we have. So I think you can see that I am kind of struggling with the distance control on the green so far because they are a lot slower than the greens that I'm used to putting on. So obviously, as I said before, this could be due to the different grasses that are growing on this golf course, but it's just something that you have to adapt to and pay attention to. Let's take a look at hole 4, which is a par 3. This par 3 is 160 yards, and if you haven't already noticed, I am playing off the blue tees today. It's basically the second tees from the back, from the most furthest behind. And they are definitely not very far from the black tees. So between the blue and the white, there is a big difference, which is what I noticed on this golf course. So make sure that you are playing a tee that you are comfortable with to make sure that you have the most enjoyable experience. As you will see later, there is quite a bit of difference between the white tees and the blue tees. Anyway, for this par 3, I ended up hitting it just a little bit short. I did not catch it entirely, but I had this chip. It was a 58 degree wedge, and I left myself with a tap in par on the fourth hole. <laughs> I wouldn't put that on <laughs> Hole 5 is a par 4, and it's not a very long one. One thing that I realized was the par 4s were all pretty short, even from the blue tees and even though they were almost pulled all the way back, but the par 3s were definitely playing pretty long. So it was pretty funny because it was almost as if your approach shots were either going to be hybrids or they were going to be wedges. So you didn't really feel like you were hitting a lot of irons on this golf course. But anyway, for this par 4, it was pretty much straight, just a little bit dog leg left, but really not much at all. You do want to hit it more towards the right side of this fairway. And also another observation that I made is I do think this golf course is a little bit fade biased. So basically, if you are a fade player, most of the time your ball actually goes away from the danger or the hazards, which was obviously something I noticed because I'm not a fade player and a draw player. And my friend who I played with, who has played here multiple times, on most holes, he would tell me that the danger was down the left side and to aim more towards the right side of the fairway. So that definitely makes me feel like this course might be more favorable to fade players. But as you will be able to see, as a draw player, you can still make yourself around this golf course. Just make sure that you choose the right targets and to stay away from the hazards which are going to cause the big numbers. So I made it on the green on this par 4. It wasn't too close, I missed it a little bit right, so I still had a little bit of distance, but I was still putting for birdie. So again, I've left another putt not only short, but very very short. And I think that obviously with the longer putts, you really do have to commit to hitting it as hard as it needs to be hit. It does feel very weird to see the, the hole pretty close to you and to have to hit it that hard. But you really just have to commit to it at the end of the day. If not, you're going to leave yourself with a lot of these shorter putts. Obviously, you don't want to leave yourself with too many six-footers for par. But sometimes that happens and you just got to try and make them. So we have reached hole 6. Again, as you can see, the left side is jungle. And the right side is jungle as well. But it definitely opens up more towards the right side. And I think in general, there are more dog leg lefts on this golf course. And that is probably another reason why. Because obviously, as you can see, there is quite a lot of space to the right versus the left side. So there is a favorable side on this golf course. 
So make sure that you aim towards that favorable side and give yourself the best chance to shoot a good score by leaving yourself in a better position. What I think might be quite eye-opening here is even though this course, as I mentioned, has a lot of dog leg lefts, it is quite funny to think that it would be more favorable to fate players. And I think the reason why is just because because of the way that the holes are made, obviously more hazard come in if you try to play a draw. So try to resist the temptation of trying to go with the dog leg and play the draw. Instead, just try to aim for the wider part of the fairway. In general, I think that the hazards here are definitely quite far out of reach. So if you do aim for the bigger side of the fairway, there is quite a bit of fairway out there. Especially on par 5s like this, it is a 3 shot par 5 for me anyway, so even though as you could see I was in a little bit of rough for the second shot, I thought I actually hit it down the center, but because it was a dog leg left, the rough does come in a little bit, so that is kind of what I was saying before as well. Aiming more towards the bigger side of the fairway would leave you in the fairway versus in the rough. And obviously you would hit better shots from the fairway, especially because it is cow grass. So for my third shot, I had about 64 yards left to the green. It was a front pin, so I had to be cautious to make sure that I had enough club to carry it all the way there. It was a little bit elevated as well. So I hit a 58 degree chip and left myself with about a 9 footer left for birdie. As you can see based on the line that I am reading, I thought that it was going to break quite a little bit. And this could be due to the fact that it is cow grass or it just could be due to the fact that it was going against the grain. But it definitely did not break as much as I thought it was going to. And in general, with most cow grass courses, it is my observation that usually it does not break as much. And usually that is because you need to putt it harder. So when you part it harder, it usually takes the break out of play. So we have reached hole 7 and this was a little bit of a tricky hole. So there is a water hazard running down the center of the fairway and I did not know how far it was to the green. I think based on what I remember, it was actually about 100 yards from the green. So I definitely could have hit a driver here but because I wasn't sure, I took the through it instead just to make sure that it was safe. I think that if it wasn't as wet and I hit a driver, there definitely was a chance of me going into that water hazard and reaching it. So the three wood might have been the play on certain days, but because of the conditions today, it was definitely more of a driver hole. It has been raining the entire night as well. So I definitely could have hit a driver. As you can see, I still got a really long ways to the green. Because of that, I still had 191 yards to the green. So because of that, I was hitting a hybrid and this green is elevated as well. But I knew that if I were to hit anything more, such as a 5 foot, there was a chance that I was going to carry it on the green, which was going to go over. And it was definitely better to be short than over on this hole based on what I could see. So I decided to go with the hybrid here, keeping in mind that there was a possibility of it going to be short. And I actually did miss it a little bit as well, so I did end up pretty short. I still had about 35 yards left to the green. And this pin position, it was actually going uphill and then downhill. As you can see, I had to hit it a little bit higher because there was quite a little bit of slope in front of the green. And past that slope, it actually goes downhill to the pin. So I definitely wanted to make sure that it went past the hole. If not, I was going to be left with a very difficult putt. So I did do that and as you can see, the pin was also very close to the edge. So I left myself with about this 7 footer left for par. And as I said before, these are really the putts that are going to make or break your game. So in 2021, if you have not set a goal yet, this should be your goal. To make more 4, 5, 6 footers. Maybe even 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 footers. Because I believe that if you do make more of those, you are going to see a change in your score. And we have reached hole 8, which is definitely the hardest tee shot on this golf course. As you can see, there really isn't much fairway out there. And it is not deceiving, there really isn't much fairway at all. So you definitely had to aim somewhere towards the card path, choose a good target and just swing at it. Especially for draw players like myself, it definitely was not an easy shot because I knew that my ball was basically going towards the hazard. And for me, I do not like to hit fades on holes like this because it's not my natural shot. So I would much prefer to hit it more towards the right side and let the draw naturally do its thing rather than try to fade it on a hole that I'm already not comfortable on because I feel like it would be much harder to commit to a shot like that versus committing to your natural shot. 
I ended up hitting a really good drive. It went pretty much straight with maybe a little baby draw. So I left myself in the fairway here. I still had 164 yards. So not only is this fairway narrow, but it is pretty long as well. It does look pretty big from this camera view, but it is still pretty narrow. Even for the second shot, there is a tree right in front of me. Thankfully, I am able to hit it high enough to get it above that tree. But it could be a little bit of a problem to some people, especially if you are hitting a longer club such as a hybrid or you know even a 5 iron or 4 iron. So you do need to make sure that you hit it to a good spot. Obviously, the more right that you can get, the better the angle that you're going to have. But also just keep in mind that this is a tough hole. From, straight from the tee shot, you can see that it's not going to be an easy hole. So don't be too hard on yourself. Hit the best shots that you can and whatever happens, happens. Yes. <laughs> We've reached hole 9 which is probably the longest par 4 on this golf course. The water in front doesn't come into play but surprise surprise there is a hazard down the left side and this hole also slopes right to left so you definitely want to hit it more towards the right side of this fairway. Anything left of the fairway is probably going to kick down and there is a cart path and there is hazard down the left side as well. So keeping it down the right side of the fairway is the aim here. I hit a decent shot, left myself in the fairway and after that I still had 160 yards left to the green. So I decided to hit a 6 iron here because it is a little bit downhill but then towards the green there is an elevation so you do need to make sure that you have enough club to get it all the way there. So the 6 iron was definitely the smarter choice here. Oh my god, I <laughs> Chin, it's so bad. So you know, sometimes you can make the right decisions, but if you don't hit the good shot, it still will not work out. I mean, I'm not in any trouble, I just thinned it as you could see, so obviously I ended up short of the green. And this was not an easy chip because the pin was in front, so I landed it well, I just did not think that it would roll out as much as it did. So after that, obviously I left myself with a pretty difficult putt. It was downhill, and it looked like it was going to be a pretty speedy putt. And as you can see, I almost had it perfect. It just was probably a tad bit too hard and that's why it did not break in. But it still was a good putt, an unfortunate bogey, but it was a bad second shot. So sometimes that happens, we just have to try and minimize the error after a bad shot. So we finished the front nine even par. It was seven pars in a row, followed by one birdie and one bogey. So let's see how we do on this back nine. So this back nine, again, Hazard down the left side, do want to keep it towards the right side of this fairway. Clearly another dog leg left, but as I said, definitely do want to just go towards the right side. Anything left will also kick left. So aiming pretty far right here because I didn't know how far I had to the left. And I didn't want to leave myself in a bad position. Obviously going to the right side will leave myself with a longer second shot. But if it's still from the fairway and we're still having a look to the green, it's a lot better than being in the hazard or in that slope down the left side where you're just left in a bad position, bad lie and probably cannot see the pin. So over here, it, as I said, even though it is a longer shot, we definitely have a clear angle to the pin which is nice. We can see the green. We know exactly where we need to hit it. So again here, we did have to go a little bit more towards the right side of this green. Obviously, I do not know the contours of this golf course or the greens because it is my first time playing here, I assume, or maybe it's not, but you know, I couldn't remember a single hole, so it's basically my first time playing here. So I hit that okay, but I ended up just a little bit too far left because it kicked left. So I had this chip, and another thing about cow grass is it is pretty difficult to spin the ball when you chip it. So I couldn't really chip the normal way that I usually do because the ball was basically not biting. As you can see, I hit it pretty decent but I still ended up over the pin and because of that, I had a downhill putt which was definitely not as easy as an uphill putt, right? So not leaving myself with the easiest putts here but today was a good putting day and as I said, the putts from this distance are really going to make and break your score anyway. So these are definitely the parts that are very very important and the parts that are going to help you shoot lower scores. 
So we move on to hole 11. Hole 11 is a pretty interesting hole. It is 406 yards, so it was pretty long. But because of the way that the hole was playing, it was a dog leg left. Basically, we couldn't see anything past the bunker down the left side of the fairway. So we did hit it a little bit more towards the right side. And I don't know if I got a good kick or if it just isn't as long as it seems. But I only had about 140 yards left to the green. So it did not play as long as I thought it was going to. And I did end up running out a little bit of fairway. So I was in this rough. It was a little bit uphill, downslope, but it wasn't that bad. It was just a tiny bit in the rough. So I was just assuming that it was going to draw a little bit, but not that much. But I did aim it towards the right side of this pin. I hit a good 9 iron there and gave myself an uphill putt, which is nice for a change. Uphill putts on cow grass actually can be pretty nice because you can hit it harder, take less break, and be more aggressive with it which is definitely something I like doing because I grew up playing on courses like this with grass like this. So it is pretty much in my comfort zone. Obviously, I have to get used to it because I haven't in a while. But once you do, it is nice to putt on courses like this because you do feel like you can be more aggressive for sure. So we've reached the first par 5 on this 9. The par 5s on this 9 I felt like were more reachable in 2 because they were definitely shorter than the front 9. This was only 467 so I knew that there was a chance that I could get there in 2. There are 2 bunkers on the fairway so the bunkers today actually weren't in play because of COVID rules. But if they were in play, I think that I would have probably hit a 3-wood here because they do make the fairway pretty narrow because they're kind of right at the carry distance of most golfers, which I think obviously was the purpose of putting them there. I hit a decent shot here. It was, I just aimed towards that left bunker because as I said, the bunker is not in play. And I left myself with about 230 yards. And for some reason, I felt like I was going to aim more right because as you can see from here, the left side does look a little bit daunting. But I didn't know what was down the right side and I definitely should have just went for the green because I actually ended up pretty close to the green. But I don't know why I aimed it a little bit too far right here. So I left myself here with this chip. It wasn't the easiest chip because there was a bunker in front of me and the pin was pretty close to the edge of the green. So I was trying to land this basically in the perfect spot and I was probably a yard or two short. So I ended up not reaching the green and resulted in me having to chip again. As you can see, as I said, it was pretty much basically a yard or two maybe short. So I had this chip here for birdie. I was hitting a 58 degree wedge again. Obviously the goal here was to make the chip. But, you know, we can always try our best, obviously. We are always trying to make every chip, I feel like. Or at least you should be trying to make every chip. But if you don't, make sure that you still leave yourself with a tap-in and not a more difficult putt for par because that is just not smart. But, you know, I kind of did not like that because I really felt like I could make it. So I did it again, just for practice. <laughs> That's what you wow. wanted to do the yes. first time. <laughs> Remove the first video and put that in. <laughs> do an edit. <laughs> There'll be some editing going on. So you guys know I'm not a fan of fake YouTube golf, but I just thought that was absolutely hilarious. And obviously we're all just joking. It's just a joke. We don't actually do that. As you can see, I would much rather show you guys my actual shot and you know, the attempt to do it again because I think it's pretty funny how, how there is a saying that even a fool can do it on the second time. So sometimes we do have to think, is it poor execution or was it trying too hard to make the chip the first time? Which was the reason why you couldn't do it the first time and you could do it the second. But anyway, let's move on to this second par 5. As I said, these par 5s on this 9 are shorter. So I almost have an identical distance, another 230 yards to the green. There, w there is a hazard in front for this hole and there are bunkers in front as well but I knew that with my 3-wood I could get it pretty close so I basically just hit a 3-wood to get it out as close as I could and I ended up here in this bunker. I mean it wasn't that bad because it is in front of the green and I am hitting my third shot and yes the bunkers are actually not in play like I mentioned before because of COVID rules but 
You know, I just wanted to practice the bunker shots because there are some courses where you do play in hard pan bunkers like this. So there is no harm in practicing them. I mean, COVID rules basically say that you can't rake them. That's why they do not require you to take a drop if you don't want to. So I did play out of it. I had a decent shot. Basically, what I tried to do there is not open the face as much so that you're able to take a little bit more sand on hard pan bunkers because you don't want to just hit the ground because obviously they're hard pan. So if you hit the ground, you're just going to not be able to use the bounce properly and you're just probably going to fly the ball really, really far. So that's not what we want to do. So for hard pan bunkers, you do want to make sure that your face is a little bit more shut. So as you can see here, I left myself with a decent chance for birdie. It was only maybe a six footer. So it was definitely something makeable. And for this par five, I definitely was trying to make a birdie. But I just did not read the break right again. And you know, I it does go over my mind sometimes. And it's much easier for me to analyze it now and see that I am taking too much break. But obviously sometimes when you're playing, you just don't notice those kind of things. Don't worry, I'm scared, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm afraid now. Bro. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Alright, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's go, 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 14 hole which is this par 3 again a decent length 175 yards i am hitting a 5 iron here again let's just listen to nature on this one so that's good right either you hit long or you hit the wedges that means this course is long that means the course is long so you don't mind playing here again sean hi little baby So another thing that you would notice at Bukit Buruntung is it also requires quite a bit of accuracy because as you heard in the conversation on the previous hole, the greens are pretty small so it's not so easy to hold them especially on this back nine when it started drying up and it started getting hard. It was definitely difficult to hold especially a long iron on these greens. So anyway, for hole 15, we're teeing off with a 5 foot here because this is not a very long hole. You can also run out of fairway down the right side if you hit it too far right. So definitely not the play here. But also, I think that this is the most beautiful hole out here. Just look at this scenery. This is definitely not something that you see often. It's so beautiful. It's surrounded by trees that are basically the trees that you see all over Malaysia. So I just absolutely love this hole. This is probably one of my favorite holes on this course together with hole 8 which was the other difficult hole. So after that tee shot, I left myself in the fairway so that was the right club selection of the tee. But because of the pin position and obviously I don't really know the greens, it did not look like there was much room behind the pin position on the right side and there was a hazard back there so I aimed for the bigger part of the green on this hole. Even though I was hitting a pitching wedge, if it's not a hole where you feel comfortable going for the pin, there is absolutely nothing wrong with going for the center of the green. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! <laughs> Bernie! Come on, do what you're leading. There he goes. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there is a big difference between playing off the blues and the whites on this golf course. So based on the scorecard, you can see that this is in meters, but what it writes here is that blacks play 195, blues play 190, and whites play 128. So that is almost 70 yards difference. This is in meters, so it's about 60 meters. So that is pretty crazy. Obviously, it's not that substantial of a difference on every single hole. But as I said, there definitely is a difference between playing off the whites and the blues on this golf course. So don't set yourself up for failure. Find a tee box that best suits you. Or you can also mix it up. As I said, the par fours are pretty short, but there are some long ones as well. So maybe for the long ones, play off the white and for the rest, you can play off the blues. 
always just make the golf course as fun as possible. Don't set yourself up to torture yourself or for failure. So as you can see, hybrid there, I landed a bit short. So it's not that bad because it is a long club into a par 3. I hit a chip but it just did not roll out as much as I thought it was going to and I left myself with another 6 footer. These are just such difficult putts to make all the time. But as I said in the beginning, my putting today was definitely very good and I think it's also because for these putts you do need to just make sure that you take less break than you think and just go for it because obviously it's closer so you can take the break out of play like I said because it is cow grass. 390 meters into the wind, far four. <laughs> So I also do think that the blues might have been pushed back to the blacks today because it said 389 meters on the ground which is actually what it says on the scorecard to be black tees so maybe I am wrong and maybe the blues are usually this long but it was definitely playing long today so for this hole I still had 200 yards into the green again as I mentioned at the beginning it's literally a lot of hybrids and a lot of wedges so I've hit more hybrids today than I have probably in the entire week <laughs> so definitely a good hybrid practice course for this hole the green is actually behind those trees so i couldn't really get a visual of the green or the pin but i did manage to hit a good shot there left myself on the green which was definitely a good shot from 200 yards i think that if you're hitting five iron and up to a green Hitting the green is definitely a bonus because those are just long clubs and obviously it's just not easy to hit a green especially when the greens are small and they are hard as well so I was definitely very happy with this shot I left myself within good birdie distance and again I just overread it I was definitely over reading putts that were more than 6 feet so if I do go back and play this course I do need to remember that because it is cow grass it probably isn't breaking as much so we have reached the last hole of the day and this is another hole that I could have won with a driver instead of a 3 wood but again because I didn't know the golf course and from the 10 hole when you see this 18 hole it actually looks super narrow but from the 18 it's actually not that narrow. So if you do go and play this golf course and see the 18 hole from the 10 hole I think you will know what I'm talking about. It looks like there's absolutely no place to hit it but when you go down there there's actually so much room left. And I ended up here just in a slight rough because I did, as I said, I didn't know how much room there was left. So I did aim it pretty far right. But I was still in play. It was a decent place to be in. It's just that I didn't hit the best shot. I pushed it a little bit and just didn't catch it very solid. So I ended up short of the green. But overall, I've really enjoyed my day today at Bukit Bruntong. I did not remember a single hole so it was like playing a brand new golf course and the funny thing is I did remember the clubhouse so I've obviously been here but maybe as I said I just did not play this golf course because it is very odd for me to not remember a single hole. Welcome to the brand new year I hope that this vlog met your expectations for the first vlog of the year. Obviously the first vlog of the year had to be done in a brand new golf course. See you guys in the next one. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great new year.